I was saying happy late Valentine's to them. I didn't get to see many of y'all. Uh, uh, there is the uh, message online uh, for last week. Uh, it was uh, put up late because of the weather and nothing was working fast. Um, uh, today, I uh, would like to uh, speak to you again from Matthew chapter 5, uh, uh, verse 4. Uh, we have talked about happy are the poor, or totally satisfied, or, or and happy or totally satisfied, or blessed are those who are mourning, and, and I'll, I'll remind you of that. And this week, uh, and I told you that these almost, uh, the first two are almost oxymoron, because they just don't seem to be accurately reflect somebody that is got everything they want uh, but we've discussed that in the past but this next one uh, totally blessed or happily or, or totally satisfied are those who uh, are, are meek now if you look in, in, in a dictionary and looked up meekness and and I'll talk to you about the meaning of meekness because it's uh, in our culture there's some misunderstandings but in the day that Jesus lived in the day that Jesus lived they were the Greeks who believed that meekness was a disease of the soul They believed it was a trait that was adverse to human condition. And they believed that it was something that you ought not never be. And here, it would have been a shock, I think, to the uh, hearer that meekness is a trait where the individual is going to inherit the earth because in that, in their view, especially the Greek culture and also many Jewish individuals, they believe that to take back the kingdom of heaven was going to take brute force. It was going to take strong individuals who exercised great will. But this is not what Jesus did while he was here. It was one of the disappointments of his disciples because they they believed that he was going to take the kingdom of heaven by force and that wasn't the case. The meaning of meekness, and if you looked up in an American dictionary, you would get the idea, get the idea of this was a person that had n no power whatsoever. An individual who uh, was a wimp, and, and so to speak, that was always backing down. But you need to understand that this term, understood biblically, means power under control. The Bible says that Jesus was a meek individual. He pleaded with people to come unto him because he was meek and lowly of heart. The Bible describes other biblical characters as meek. We'll explore a few of them. I'll take Christ first as an example when they came to arrest Jesus, they brought soldiers to arrest him. Now Peter whipped out a sword and cut one of their ears off. Now I don't think he was aiming at the ear. I think he just missed the neck and got here. Jesus picked up the man's ear, put it back on his head and healed him. Then he turned around to Peter and told him, he said, Know you not that I could call twelve leads of the angels at this time? But Jesus did not do that. Rather, he submitted to being arrested, submitted to being put on trial, submitted to going to the cross of Calvary and dying for every one of us. He had power to exercise that he could have exercised that day to wipe out everybody he wanted to. He could have wiped out every human being on the earth. But he chose rather not to do that. But so he kept what power he had and he used it meekly. 
He didn't, he didn't <coughs> chose not to exercise that power. That's meekness, power under control. Have you ever seen an elephant at a zoo or at a at a, a carnival? And that elephant is staked down by a little bitty peg. How many of y'all believe that elephant can pull that peg out the ground? He can. You know why he don't? Because he's been pegged to that probably since he was little and he just don't know how much power he has in able to exercise. He chooses not to exercise it so he don't pull the peg out the ground. There have been a few that did, by the way. And it's kind of catastrophic what well, happened afterwards. Power under control. The ability to do something and not. It is something that plagues the human spirit is they believe that if we have the right and the might, we ought to do it. But Jesus had the right, did he not, to call 12 legions of angels. He's the God of heaven. He surely had the might, right? But he chose not to do that. There's going to be a time and place in your life where you have to make choices just because you can do something don't mean you should. Just because you have the power to do something don't mean you ought to either. Power under control. Meekness. There's other individuals in the Bible where you can find an individual exercising meekness. David was hunted by the king of Israel at that time, Saul. King David, who God had already anointed the king of Israel. Saul was still on the throne of Israel. And he, and he hated David to the point where he wanted to kill him. And he searched for David everywhere. One time uh, Saul walked into a dark cave. Unbeknownst to him, David was in that very dark cave. And Saul got so close to David while he was in that cave David reached up and cut off a piece of his clothing but did not hurt him. He could have killed him. But he let him go. And he walked out of that cave unbeknownst to him how close he was to death. When David was being questioned by Saul, he, he told him, he said, look, I had your life in my hand. But because God ordained you, the king of Israel, I'll let God choose when you leave here, not me. That's power under control. That's meekness. That is the individual who has power to do something, but he doesn't defend himself. David, you can find some other examples of that. Saying, Listen, this is an individual that killed lions, that killed bears, that killed a giant with a rock. I'm sure he could have killed Saul with a sword when he was real close to him. His son rebelled against him, drove him out of Jerusalem. When he was leaving, there was an individual rose up and threw rocks at him as he was leaving. One of his guards said, well, let me go take off that man's head. And he said, no, let God deal with him. And he walked on. That's meekness. That is having power and choosing not to exercise it. Choosing to allow God to do what He will do. Moses had to learn meekness. He learned meekness in the wilderness when he was uh, taking care of sheep. He learned the difference between, and y'all excuse me, but a cowboy and a shepherd are two different critters. I don't mean to offend anybody, but they just all. When God called Moses to lead his people out of Egypt, Moses had his own idea how that was going to happen. Y'all know that? One of his first acts, he saw an Egyptian doing something to a Jewish individual, a Hebrew, and he, he took and he killed that man and he hid him in the sand. That was found out later on and he went and hid in the desert for about 40 years.
When he did lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, you know how many fights they got in? None. You know how many swords that they had to pick up to leave and fight for their freedom? None. By the time God got through with the nation of Egypt, Egypt wanted them to leave. Power under control. Understanding that God is in control. The idea is, is that it is a relationship between you and God. First and foremost, meekness is. It is accepting God's will for you. David accepted that God had ordained him the king and when God's time was right, he would be the king of Israel. He didn't try to speed that up. Jesus accepted the fact that the only way to redeem man was go to the cross of Calvary and to do so he had to allow himself to be subjected to the rage of sinners. I want y'all to think about this. He allowed himself to be arrested. He allowed himself to go to the cross of Calvary. He allowed himself to die on the cross. He had the power to end that at any moment and at any time. But he chose not to do so. It's unfortunate many times that me and you, we don't understand the power we have, nor the meekness God expects us to exhibit to a lost and dying world. Some of it classified meekness as an indefinition is halfway between angry and not. I always thought that was strange. <laughs> halfway between angry for no reason at all and not is the ability, some of others have said it is self-control. The ability to crow, crow one's emotions, one's thoughts, the intents of their hearts. It's to think in a way that is not about you. What's best for you? You'll learn that we have a tendency to only think about our own selves. You see, when Jesus... When he went to the cross of Calvary, he could not think about himself. You know who he was thinking about? You. He was thinking about your redemption. He was thinking about you being born again. You getting a new life. You uh, being uh, set free from sin. He wasn't thinking about himself. He was thinking about you. Meekness is you not thinking about you. Your direction of thought is about God alone. Allowing Him to have His perfect will in your life. Meekness is closely related to being poor. And also closely related to being mourning. It's all those things having their perfect work. You allowing God to do what he does best. This is what Jesus said about the man that smoked upon his breast. The one that cried out, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. It says that he went down to his house justified. The one who exhibited that mourning, the one who exhibited that humbleness, he allowed God to do what God does best. Put him back together. He allowed God to exalt him. To raise him from a lowly state to a higher state. The Bible says, God giveth grace to the humble, but he resisteth the proud. That haughty spirit. You see, this meek and contrite spirit. This spirit that ought to be in you. Listen, now some of y'all are saying, hold up, that ain't me. Right? Uh, I have news for you. If it ain't you, it ought to be. 
If you know Jesus Christ, this is who came into your heart the moment you were saved. You have this ability to be this person. You have this ability to make these choices. Folks, listen. If you want to see the example of meekness, I want you to go to the cross of Calvary and look up at a man dying for you. I assure you he was thinking about you, not himself. It is you putting yourself on the back burner and putting God on the front burner. Everybody else, human being, I want you to notice something about the Ten Commandments. You know who two things it deals with? It deals with your relationship with God and your relationship with everybody else. Nowhere in the Ten Commandments does it deal with your relationship with you. Your last concern are to be you. We live in a world where we have taught people that they are to think about themselves and themselves alone. Them getting ahead. Them making better for themselves. I'm going to remind you, it is us that are to be letting God do the exalting. We see this in companies, work, every aspect of our lives would be better if people wouldn't act like this is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Several years ago, I built a series of messages about don't be a junkyard dog. Y'all might remember them. It's been a few years. There's a verse in the book of Galatians that says, take heed that you bite not bite and devour one another. If you let the flesh man have his way, if you let him do everything he wants to do, he's going to eat up everybody around you. That's what's going to happen. Now how? How do I let meekness reign in my heart? Now you know what it is. How do you let it reign in your heart? Yeah, it's pretty simple. Number one, you have to know Jesus as Savior. <coughs> you have to know Him as Savior. And then after knowing Him as Savior, you let you have to let Jesus fulfill your all in all. Every one of these things that are said in this text, prior to be poor and to mourn, is all about the relationship with Jesus Christ. It ain't something you become, it's something you have to be. When Jesus said you must be born again, this is what you're born into. And if you might say, well, I didn't get meekness. No, you haven't availed yourself of what Jesus has given you if you have not exhibited meekness. It's there. I've had people say, well, I just can't love that individual. Well, you're lying if you know Jesus Christ. You can love that individual. Jesus loved that individual. That means you can love that individual. You're making a conscious decision in your heart not to exhibit the meekness and love that Jesus Christ has put there. Now, that can be a choice you make. I have news for you. The outcome is not great in your own life because you allow somebody else to have power over you. If you can keep, when y'all do understand, when Power under control means you're exercising self-control. You know what you do when you give somebody else that place where you're not in self-control anymore and you, you blow off at everything? Guess what happened? You allowed that person to be in control of you and you ain't no more. You allowed Satan to have a, a place in your life where he ought not have it. You're doing that. You're, and you heap to yourself many sorrows by doing so. I've talked to so many people in my time in the ministry, and they always got some individual, some event. You know how much power you're giving that individual in that event? 
Some people are giving them that all the power to keep them out of God's house. That's how much power you're giving them. You don't come to God's house because of somebody. There's some lost people out there that have surrendered their hearts in eternity to some event somebody did to them. Exercise. The Spirit of God has these traits. If you let the Spirit of God dwell richly in you, if you be filled with the Spirit of God, these are the things, traits you'll have. And if you're not exhibiting them, and we already discovered, he that don't have the Spirit, how much of it he is is Jesus's? None. Right? It's a trait you can exhibit. It's also a trait you might not want to at times, right? It's a whole lot easier being mad. Uh, um, I told this story several years ago. I worked for the water company at one time. I had great compassion to those fellers that was out there trying to make it run and, and it minus five degrees or at 10 degrees or whatever. But I had this feller that I don't know why, but he wanted to intimidate me every time I read his meter. And he'd come out there and, and I'd put his meter lid back on gently because it was hard to get out of the hole. And he'd come out there and jump up and down on it where it was stuck there. And he'd look at me when he did it. And he kept doing that and kept doing that. And I finally, you know, even the pastors put their foot in their mouths. Okay? I couldn't take no more. And so one day I told him, I said, I'm just going to take that lid home with me and you'll jump in an empty hole. You know, I've got kind of tired of having to dig that thing out of there. Him smiling at me. And that man come out the road went to grab a hold of me. And it was everything I could do to get in the truck and not get in a fight with that feller. But I got in the truck and drove off. And later on, I tell somebody about that, and he said, you ought to just hit him and ask God for forgiveness. I said, no, it don't work that way. That is not what God wanted me to do, I assure you. Now, I wanted to hit him over the head with my tire tool, I assure you. My old man, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to, after I got in my truck, to drive over him three times, right? But the new man knew that that wasn't what God would have me to do. It is allowing God to be your all in all. He's supposed to be your rock, your high tower, your protection. He's the one you're supposed to run to in those times. Our basic instinct says to fight. At least mine always has. Okay. How? Now why? Folks, listen. It is the meat that is going to inherit the earth. I got news for you. It ain't the powerful. It ain't those who exert themselves... And, and act like and think like they got the world by the tail. I assure you, this year I told people they ain't got the world by the tail. Uh, there's just a few people who don't know until they ain't figured it out. We're not in control. We've never been in control. You're not in control of you. We're going to inherit everything. The meat will. I'm sure this was a shock to lots of people because they believe that the, it would be inherited by force, but it will not be. The death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ on a cross is what allows us to inherit the earth. Me allowing him to be my everything, that allows me to inherit the earth. You know how many people will do things, try to inherit things, swindle somebody else out of something? The underhanded stuff that can go on in families. 
I had family members that never spoke to one another after my grandmother died. Ever spoke to one another. Never said another word. I assure you, that which God will provide is better than anything you're going to have here. That inheritance is a lot better. Several years ago, I read a story about a man who had come across the, this, it sounded like a great deal. They were allotting out pieces of property. And all you had to do was you, your property could be no bigger than that which you could walk around in a day. And whatever you walked around in the day, that's what you got. Sound like a good deal, right? And so this man went out and he run this piece of property trying to get all he could get. And he had to make it back from where he started before sundown or he got nothing. And so the man run out and walked and, and walked and walked and he run back to the starting point right before dark. And he got there and he had a heart attack and died. You know how much dirt he got? About a six by six hole. And that's all you're going to have one day. Here. Some of y'all going to get less than that. Maybe. Some people say that well, y'all, some of y'all literally don't touch so much. Right? I assure you that your inheritance is secure in God. There ain't nothing down here, ain't that is. I can assure you that. Uh, I know families that have uh, uh, wrote ironclad wheels about what's supposed to happen to their property. Right? You know what your kid's going to do with your property after you're gone? You have no idea. You know, we run around here and every place is named after somebody. And it took me a long time to get all these names straight because people told me, well, go down to this place. I said, well, who is that? Well, they lived here in the 1940s. Right? I'm thinking... It's kind of like that. Uh, somebody was telling me one day, he said, go down there beside that old oak tree that died years ago. It's no longer there. I said, well, how am I expecting to find me that now? Uh, it's gone. It's not there. Right? Folks, listen. I want you all to think about all the names you call things and the people that had it then don't have it now. I assure you, that which we'll inherit is sure. 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 The meek will inherit the earth. That's the blessing of meekness. One day the world is going to find out who actually is in control. And who actually is going to be in control. Don't let it be one too late. One day too late for you. Meekness. Let's all stand together.